Again, in the Mishnah, we discussed the eight cases of Hetzah and Achnasa. There was Shtayim Shen Arba Befnim and Shtayim Shen Arba Bechutz. So what was in short <coughs> the concept of all these cases? You have Hetzah and Achnasa, the full Malacha done by the Oni. And you have the full Malacha, Hetzah and Achnasa done by the Balabayas. What's considered the full Malacha? When you have both an Akira and a Hanacha. And then you have a half Malacha that's done by the Oni where the Oni does only an Akira or only a Hanacha, and the half Malacha that's done by the Balabayas, only an Akira or only a Hanacha. Those were the eight cases. So the Gemara now is going to point out that L'Chaira, it's not eight cases, it should be counted as twelve cases. Because every time, when you go, let's take the Oni, when you're counting by the Oni, two cases where he does a half Malacha, either he did only the Akira or only the Hanacha, there's the other half, somebody else did the other half. The Balabayas is the one that did the Hanacha in the case where the Oni did only the Akira, and the Balabais is the one that did the Hanacha in the case, uh, the, 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 did the Akira in the case that the Oni do, only did the Hanacha. Why aren't we counting the other half of the Malacha as well, which was done by the Balabais? <coughs> and it's the same the other way around. When the Mishnah was counting the two cases where the Balabais did a half of Malacha, who did the other half? The Oni did the other half. So for counting half Malachas, we should count 12 cases. Every case that a half malacha is done is divided into two. So you should get to twelve. Avla Rav Masna Labaye. So Rav Masna asks Abaye the question, Hot Mani Havyon. The cases of the Mishnah add up to eight. Tati Sari Havyon. There are really twelve cases. So why are we counting only eight? So he, answer, he asks him back. Abaye asks him, Ule Tai Meich. We're two lines from the bottom. Ule Tai Meich. And according to your logic, Shit Sari Havyon. There should be 16. 8 and 8 is 16. Yeah. Huh? Where's 16? Go back to the Reisha of the Mishnah. In the Reisha of the Mishnah, when the Oni does the full Malach, he did the Akira and the Shusarabim and the Hanach and the Shusayachid. There's somebody that accepted it from him. The Balabais was standing there and he placed it into the Balabais' hands. <coughs> Why don't we count the Balabais that accepted the Chayfits into his hands also as another aspect, as another case of the Malach? So every time, even when there's one individual that did the full Malacha, the Akira and the Anacha, whether it's Haitzah, whether it's Achnasa, somebody is taking it into his hands. That should be counted as well. So you have another four cases for the two uh, Haitzah and Achnasa of the Ani and the Haitzah and Achnasa of the Balabait. There's always somebody accepting it into his hands and that should be counted as well. So that, so that the Gemara says, Omalei, Rav Masnan responded to that and said, Holei Kashya. To count the cases where the Balabayas or the Ani accepts it in his hands, when the other individual did the full Malacha, that's not a question. Why not? It's well understood in the Reisha of the Mishnah, where it talks about an Ani or a Balabayas that did the full Malacha. Pater, Umuter, Loi, Katani. So the other individual that just accepted it into his hands, what he did is nothing. It's Pater and it's Mutter. He did nothing of the Malacha. That the Mishnah is not counting at all. Pater, Mutter, like a that's not counted as any of the cases. El, above the Seife, however, the second cases of the Mishnah, where it discusses the Oni and the Balabai is doing a half Malacha. Pater, Aval, Asur, each person is doing a half Malacha, which is Pater, but it's Asur, because you're doing half of the Malacha, Kashia. Here the question remains, <laughs> why? It's Asur, Madar, Abanon. So here the question remains, if you're counting the half Malacha of the Oni, that he did only the Akira, only the Hanacha, why not count the other half as well? The Balabai is also the half of the Malacha. So it should add up to, to, to 12 cases. Now, so the Gemara now questions first another thing about this. So this is Akashi, this remains a question. But now the Gemara has a problem with the fact that the Mishnah uses the term Potter here. Let's see. Mi ike bekula Shabbos. Potter or Mutter? What are you making a distinction over here? In the Reishon when it said Potter, when the person that accepted the Chayfitz into his hands did nothing, that Kiran Danacha was done by somebody else. So over there it's completely Mutter when you accept it into your hands. So his question is, how could the Mishnah use the expression of Potter? I mentioned this yesterday in Shabbos, and some actually say that it's not only in Hilchah Shabbos, but it's Bechlal. Whenever the term Potter is used, Potter does not mean that it's Mutter. Potter only means that it's Potter Aval Asr. So in the Reish of the Mishnah, when it says Potter, does it mean Mutter? Umi, Ike, Bukul, Shabbos, Potter, or Mutter? For Omash Shmuel, but Shmuel said, Kol, Peturi, the Shabbos, 
Pater Avalaser, any time in Mesech the Shabbos, regarding the halachas of Shabbos, when it mentions the word Pater, what does Pater mean? Pater Avalaser, it's forbidden. And then Shmuel said, there are three exceptions to this. Only three exceptions. What are they? Bar Mahani Tlas. Besides the following three cases, where it says the term Pater, and it means that it's completely Mutter. What are those three cases? <coughs> the Pater U Mutter. Tzedas Tzvi. In the case of trapping a deer, this is a case where there's a deer that's already trapped. He's trapped in a house. To somebody that's sitting by the doorway and trapped, the deer is trapped because somebody's sitting there. Now somebody else comes and sits down. And the first person that was sitting there wants to get up and leave. And you're Lechayda now, the person that's trapping the deer in the house by sitting at the doorway. But because it was already trapped, there's no Isser of Tzayda. Tzayda is one of the Lama Tes Malachas. There's no Malacha of Tzayda for something which is already trapped. Trapping is for something which is in the wild, and you trap it. But if it's already trapped, and you're, you're doing Tzayda on something which is Tzad, there's no Tzayda. So it's completely Mutter. It's one example. Tzayda's Nachash, another example, a person that traps a snake, and what we're talking about over here is Taka, the person's Be'em is trapping the snake. But this is still Mutter. Why is it Mutter? So Tesis over here explains there's two reasons, two combination of two points. First of all, there's a klal in Hilchus Shabbos. This is a, a machleikis actually, but this b'rais that the Gemara is quoting over here is going according to the opinion of Rab Shimon. Rab Shimon's opinion is anytime you have a malachis she'ena tzricha l'gufa, it's pater. What does malachis she'ena tzricha l'gufa mean? When you do a malacha, but it's not for the sake, for the intended purpose of that malacha. When a person traps something, what would be the intended purpose of that malacha? You want the snake? You're a snake collector, whatever it is. You want to trap the snake, they had to keep the snake. But over here, we're talking about a person that's trapping the snake just to eliminate its danger that it poses on the people around. or Because uh, it could bite somebody. Nothing to do with uh, trying to capture the snake for the sake of the snake itself. So therefore, that's called a malacha she'ena tzricha l'gufa. You're not, you don't need, you're not interested in the snake itself. Okay, but then there's another detail here. Still, even according to Rab Shimon, that says that that's Potter, <coughs> min derabbanon usually, amalach Hashem, it's richel agufa, is oser. But in this case, as Taisus explains, we're not talking about a case where a snake is mamish apkoch nefashis. It's a danger that it can bite you and kill you. Then it would be obviously mutter completely. It's pkoch nefashis. We're talking about a snake that could bite you and cause you tsar. So because of the tsar that the bite of the snake could cause, they will matter the malach Hashem, it's richel agufa. So that's why it's mutter. A third if case. It, if it's dangerous, then. then there's, not, there's nothing to talk about. Kula Alma. It's not only Rav Shimon, it's Kula Alma. If it's Bekoch Nefash, it's a different story. So we're not talking about that here. And a third case, so Mafis Morsa. A person that has a boil and it's full of pus. And the Mishnah says, this is later, we're going to learn in Metz Hashem, that there's the, there's the Isser of Baina. You're not allowed to be build on Shabbos. One of the Lama Tes Malachis. So one of the aspects of Baina is when you create a doorway, an opening. When you build and, and, and create an opening, that's a binyan. What's the binyan of a doorway? So it says that it's only if the doorway that you opened is made to enter and to exit, to come in and out. That's what a doorway is. So the same concept of baina applies also to creating an opening in a boil that you have on your body. If you're creating that opening with the purpose to remove the pus that's inside, and also you want the ear to enter into that boil, to heal it. So then you're creating an opening with a purpose to, to, for entry and for exit, that the pus should come out and the ear should go in. That's Asr, that's Ma'amish HaMalach of Baina. But if a person is opening that pus only to drain, opening the boil that is, only to drain the pus, not for the purpose because he has, he's in pain and he wants to drain the pus that's inside, but he's not, not for the purpose to allow ear to enter. So then, <coughs> because of the tsar and it's a malacha she'en etzricha l'gufa, he's not, he's only opening it up because he wants to get out the, the, the pus that's inside, that's mutter. <coughs> bag of chips, you're allowed to open it? It's a good question, it's a good question. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's keep it to this Indian over here. We're going to learn a mitzvah barichis and there's a whole pedic about it later. That's a different problem. It's, uh, yeah. So these are the three cases which are mutter. Otherwise, any time it says in the in Masech the Shabbos, the expression of Pater, what does Pater mean? Pater Avalaser. So the question is regarding our Mishnah. In the Reisha of our Mishnah, it said Pater. And what's the Pshat Pater? Pater means Pater and Mutter. How could that be? So the Gemara answers, Ki Yitzrich Leil Shmuel, Pturi Dekavad Maisa. When was it necessary for Shmuel to clarify? 
that the term potter means potter avalosser, besides three cases, if there's an action done. So here there's a chiddush, although there's an action done, it's mutter. Pturi, the loikavad maise, cases where the Gemara uses the expression of potter, and the person didn't even do any action at all, iketuve. There could be more cases where the word potter means that it's completely mutter because the person didn't do an action. In the reisha of our Mishnah, the person didn't do any action at all. The Balabais was standing there and just accepted it into his hands. He didn't do any action, not an akira and not a hanocha. So therefore it's poshit that the term potter means potter and mutter. So the Gemara goes back to the original question. The kol mokai. However, Rav Masna's original question remains, Tarti Sarahavyan. Why don't we count in our Mishnah 12 cases? The half malachis, each half malachis should be counted in two, so it should come out to 12 cases. For the Gemara, Peturi, the Asi, Bohu, Lidei, Chiv, Chatas, Kachashiv. The Mishnah is only counting those parts of the malacha that will lead to a Chiv, Chatas. And the ones that will not, the loya sibulu de chiv chatas, the part of the malacha that you cannot come to a chiv chatas, like a chashiv. That he doesn't count. What's the pshat in this gemara? There are many pshatim in this gemara in the Rishayim. The, 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 the Rashi of here himself brings two pshatim. What the first pshat Rashi brings is we're only we're only counting the akiras, the beginning of the malacha, because when a person did an akira alone, that could bring to the conclusion of the malacha the hanacha. So it's more chamor. If a person does just tahanoche, the balabais receives from the ani and places it down. Or the ani receives from the balabais and places it down. Or the ani takes from the balabais after the balabais did the akira and places it down. So if you're doing only the hanoche, it's impossible for you to come to achiv chatas. Because you're lacking the akira before. But if you do only the akira, you can come to achiv chatas. So in the Mishnah, we're only counting the cases of the akiras. That's one pshat and rashi. Another pshat and rashi means we're counting the chalik of the malacha where the person is doing the primary act of the malacha, the one that's stretching his hand into the other rishus. There's one individual that's picking up the chayfits in the rishus ayachit or in the rishus arabim, and he's just picking it up right over there. So he did do an akira, but he stays in his rishus. There's the other individual that stretches his hands into your rishus, whether he stretches his hands in full or he stretches his hand in empty. But he's the one that's going from his own rishos into your rishos, and he's the one that's transferring it from one rishos to another. So we're only counting the person that's doing the ikr chalik of the malacha, which is the hoitzah, the transferring from one rishos to another. Not the person that does an act, and it remains in the domain that he's in. <coughs> the Gemara continues, Shnei and Peturin, so it said in the Seif of the Mishnah that when each one does a half a malacha, they're both potter. Why are they both potter? <coughs> Between the two of them, <coughs> a malacha was done. So if you have a full malacha was done, so then shouldn't they be high for the malacha that was done? <coughs> What's the pshat in the Gemara's question? Taisus' opinion over here is, that the Gemara is asking this behemshach to what it just said. The Gemara is saying that we just said that if it comes lidei chiv chatos, so then that's something that the mission is mentioning. So therefore the Gemara is asking, could be taka we know shnaim shasu peturin, that we're not going to be mechaiv both of them. Taka we're not going to be mechaiv the one that did the akira and the one that did the anocha. However, the one that completed the malacha, shouldn't we be mechaiv him? Mm-hmm. He's the one that brought it to the final conclusion of the malacha, the chiyav chatas. Why are we not mechaiv him for the malacha? So at least one of them, the one that completed the malacha, should be chayiv. So the Gemara answers, Tanya, Rabbi Oimer, Rabbi says, Me'am ha'aretz ba'asaysa. The Pasuk where it talks about chiyav chatas says, Ba'asaysa, when you will do it. So from the Gemara, dashes from this, Ha'aysa as kula, if you did the full malacha, then you're chayiv. And that, if you did, only part of the malacha. So therefore, an individual that does the full malacha is chayiv. If you have two people that uh, together did the malacha, they're potter, including the person that did the hanacha and completed it, is also potter. This was something that was announced equally. Everybody from a Chabura sat together. An individual that does a Malacha, 
He's chayy for doing the malacha alone, the full malacha. Shnaim shasua, two people that do a malacha together, pturin are pater. Even the person that completed the malacha is also pater. So yes, of course. Taking out a table from the shoes. They're pater. Well, there's, there's, we'll see. There's details about that. When you get two people taking out a table, there are details about that. If they can carry it alone, if they can carry it uh, only together, we'll see. The Gemara will discuss it later. This is going to come. It's a shem. So Rav asked the following boy from Rebbe, What's if you're standing in a Rosh Hashanah and your friend places on your back a knapsack for a mushal, a food inside of it, or anything really. And then you walk out with it into the Rosh Hashanah. So now you never lift it off of a table or wherever it was, that food. You didn't do the akira from a position. The, the food was on your body. What akira happened here? Walking. The person walked from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah with this item on his back. Does that count for an akira or not? Mahu. Akira's gufa, akira's chayfetz mem kaimei dami. When you're uprooting your body, meaning the person is walking, does that, does that count also that you uprooted the chayfetz from the Rosh Hashanah? And therefore, Yechayev, Mechayev, Oidilme Loi. Or perhaps the Akira has to be a direct Akira on the Chayfetz itself, that you lifted up the Chayfetz off the place where it was positioned. Not if the Chayfetz was on your body and you walked out. Omalei, so Rebbe answered, Chayef. He is Chayef. It is counted as an Akira. And then Rebbe immediately clarified, and you can't compare to the case of the hand of the person. What's the case of the hand that the person is talking about? It's talking about the Mishnah. What happens if the Oni, which is outside, stretches his hands inside, into the Rishus HaYachid, and the Balabayis places something into the Oni's hand, and then the Oni takes his hand out, it's not considered to be a full Malacha. What do we say? The Balabayis did the Akira. The only the Oni only did the Hanacha. I the Chayfet was already placed into the Oni's hand, and he pulled his hand out. So why shouldn't we say that he did the full Malacha, because it was placed in his hand, and then by by removing his hand from that Rishos, that itself should be an Akira, and then he places it down. That's the Hanacha, but we don't say that. So the Gemara says you can't compare the person walking out with his body from Rishos Sayacha to Rishos Arabim, and withdrawing your hand that was stretched out from Rishos Sayacha to Rishos Arabim. Why not? My time, eh? Gufay Nayach. Your body is posi- positioned on the ground, you're standing with two feet firmly and settled on the ground. Yodoy, your hand which is stretched out to another Rishos, Loi Nayach. Your hand is not positioned and settled down anywhere. Your hand is in midair stretched out into another Rishos, and therefore when you pull your hand out, you're not doing an akira. Your hand is in an unsettled position. So you took a chayfet that was already placed into your hands, which is not in a settled position, and you pull your hand out, you're not uprooting the chayfet from a settled position. The Balabais did that already. The Gemara continues. Amalei, born Gimel Amad Beis. Gimel Amad Beis, the next page. Amalei, Ravchie, Lerav. So Ravchie commented to Rav after this conversation between Rebbe and Rav. Bar Pachsi, son of noblemen. This is an expression we had in the Gemara and Brachas a few times. Rav was considered to be a descendant of great uh, Taita scholars, so he's called a Bar Pachsi. Did I, did I not really tell you once? Kikoi Rabbi Bahai Mesechta, when Rabbi is learning one Mesechta, let the be Mesechta Achriti, don't ask him questions in another Mesechta, why not? Dilmalava Daite, perhaps he won't have the Das, he won't not have the knowledge to answer, and then, so then you'll embarrass him. The Ilav, the Rabbi Gavr Rabahu, if not for the fact that Rabbi is such a great person and he always could answer properly, Kesifte, you may have embarrassed him. The Mishani Lacha Shinuya, the Lav Shinuyahu, he would have given you an answer that's not the right answer. But hashta mi is shapim mishani lecha. Here, Rabbi did give the right answer. So Rabbiya was the one that was very bucky in brayses. Rabbiya and Rabbi put together the brayses, and Rabbiya is going to bring a brayse to support what Rabbi said. What does it say in a brayse? So the brayse says the Tanya. <coughs> the brayse says hoya ton oichlun umashkin miboydyan. If a person is, has Eichel and Amashkin that was placed upon him from daytime, so before we were talking about on Shabbos, 
that a person puts on himself or his friend puts on his body. If a person had oichel and a mashkin that was on him from before Shabbos, and then he walked out with it on, the, on Shabbos, after it was shkia, after it was dark. So he's chayiv by walking out. You can't compare withdrawing your hand from a Rishus to a Rishus to a person that's walking from a Rishus HaYachet to a Rishus HaRabim. So it's a Befeirish Ebraise. Taisus clarifies in the Pshat of the Braise, if a person had f- food in his hand or food on his back and he was walking in his house on Shabbos and he continues walking and then it becomes dark and he walks out because he was walking before Shabbos began so he wasn't settled. So there's no Akira. The Akira happens during the week. Before it's the Huh? No? Yeah. He started walking in his house. He, wa- he started walking before Shkia. On Shabbos. No, 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 no. Before no, Shkia. No, before. He started walking before Shkia, then Shabbos arrives, and he continues walking until he walks out into the Rosh Hashanah. Let's say, first for example, a posh example, posh example, a person has in his pocket something on, on, on the, during the week, uh, before Shabbos. Out of Shabbos, he has something in his pocket. And he's, well, he's running around out of Shabbos, and he's coming from here to there, and he's busy doing his, his last things, and he's not stopping in motion for even a second. And then, as Shabbos arrives, he goes out to Shul, and he has something in his pocket. He didn't check his pocket. So you, you didn't stand in one position, and then uproot and lift up from that position and walk out. So then, you're not doing an Akira, there's no Akira here. Because the Chayfetz was, was, the person was walking around. If the person stopped, to put on his coat or whatever, and he stopped it, and he was standing firmly in one position, and then he walked out, then it's an Akira and a Hanukkah. You hold it in your hands. Your <coughs> so you hold it in your hands. Yeah, if you hold it in your hands, Alex, okay. It's Lukhir, even if you stop, it's not if an the, Akira. No, but if the person is, uh, again, if, what, what, what's the point of holding it in his hands? No, but if, no, your, body stops, if your body is in motion, so then there's no Akira. If your body is settled in one position, that is an Akira. So even though I'll a split moment, he was standing in one place for a split second. Because as you're walking, you, you're yeah, touching well, that, that's not called well, That's not called settled. Okay? So that's the point there. Halicha. While a person is walking, we're not talking about a person that's hovering in the air. Right. While the person is walking, so he's in constant motion, so therefore that's not going to be counted as an akira. The akira is only if the person stood in one position. As is like Continuing on this case over here, where a person had his hand stretched out into another shus. Pshitali. It's obvious to me. The hand of a person, <coughs> which is stretched out into a different domain than his body. The halacha of the hand will not be like the, the domain where the body is in. Whether the body is in a Rosh Yachid, whether the body is in a Rosh Rabbim. And the Gemara explains, An outstretched hand in a different Rosh does not have the din like the body, which is in a Rosh Rabbim. Where do I see this? I see this from the Mishnah, from the hands of the Ani. What does it say in the Mishnah? The Ani is standing in the Rosh Rabbim. His hand is stretched into the Rosh Yachid. If the Bala Bayis places something into the hands of the Ani, do we say that it's as if he placed something into a Rosh Rabbim? No. No. Even though the hand is attached to his body, which is standing in the Rosh Rabbim. But because the hand is stretched into a Rosh Yachid, the hand, to some degree, is separated from the body. Because the hand is now extended into a different Rosh So therefore we see that the hand is not follow the position of what the body itself is in, which is in a Shusarabim by the case of the Ani. And Kirishur Sayachid Leidami, the same is also the other way around, that the hand will not have the din of the Rishur Sayachid if that's where the body is. If the Balabais' body is in a Rishur Sayachid and his hand is stretched into the Rishur Sayachid and the Ani places something into the hands of the Balabais, I don't say that it's like he placed it into the Rishur Sayachid because his hand is stretched into a Rishur Sayachid. So the point is, the hand does not fully follow the status of the body. So now, based on this, Abaya has a question. So, boy, Abaya, Yodri Shalodom, and a person stretches out his hand on Shabbos, and he did a half a malacha. He uprooted something from Rishu Yachid, and he stretched out his hand with it to the Rishu Sarabim, or the other way around. So he did a half a malacha. Mao Shetase Kekarmelis. Do I say that the person's hand gets a status of a Carmelis? So let me explain first what a Carmelis is. Carmelis is another Rishus Midrabonon, which is not a Rishus Yachid and not a Rishus Rabbim. 
Most of the Rosh Hashanahs that we have today have the halacha of a, car, uh, a Carmelis. In order for something to have the halacha of a Rosh Hashanah, it has to be 16 amas wide, and according to some opinions, there has to be 600,000 people passing there every day. It's a, that's a machlekes yushayinim. But most of the Rosh Hashanah that we have today, the streets over here, are not 16 amas wide, and for sure don't have 600,000 people passing, at least not the smaller streets. So therefore, they do not have a din of Rosh Hashanah, rather they have a din of a Carmelis. A Carmelis is sort of a Rosh Hashanah in the Rabbanon. We'll learn about Shem and Davav, the Gemara will discuss this. So, with Rabbanon, you're not allowed to move an item from a Carmelist to a Rishus Yachid or from a Carmelist to a Rishus Rabbim. The Rabbanon. Okay? So, now the question is this person did a half a Malacha on Shabbos. He didn't complete his Malacha, but he did a half a Malacha. Should I say that because he did a half a Malacha, there was a Knas? And what was the Knas? That if you st- stretch out your hand and you did a half a Malacha, you may not w- bring your hand back. You have to stand with your hand over there till the end of Shabbos. You did a half a malacha, there's a gzeda, you not, may not retrieve your hand. Why not? Gzeda, a knas for doing a half a malacha, for being over. Ay, what's the pshat what's the pshat in this gzeda? So the, the Gemara here explains, at least at this point, the pshat of the gzeda is, they didn't stop make a gzeda, hold your hand there. They considered your hand to be like a rishus for itself, like a karmelis. Since we see from our Mishnah that the status of the hand does not fully follow the status of the body, so if your body is in a Shusa Yachid, or your body is in a Shusa Rabbim, your hand, which is stretched out into another domain, does not follow the status of your body, so therefore possibly Chachalim considered your hand to be a separate Shus. Your hand that's stretched out into another Shus now has a status of a Carmelis, so you're not allowed to take your hand back in. Me kansuara bana la duri ligabe, did the rabbana make a gzeda that he may not pull his hand back? Oiloi, or perhaps Chachalim did not make such a gzeda. The hand does not have the status of a Carmelis, and you may pull back your hand. Toshima, the Gemara brings that this is Lachaira said clearly in Abraise. Hoysa yodimele peirais, a person that has his hands filled with fruits, vaitsi lachots, and he stretches out his hand on Shabbos outside. Tani chade, in one b'raise it says, Asa zira. It's forbidden to, 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 to take your hand back to the rishus where it came from. Tani idach, and then in another b'raise it says, Motalach zira. You may return your hand. You only did a half a molacha, you're allowed to return your hand to take back that molacha that you did. The beginning of that molacha that you did. So my love, ma kamifli. Seemingly, this is the argument here. Mar savak a karmelis damye. The brayse that says that it's forbidden to return your hand is because now your hand has the status of a karmelis, so you're not allowed to return it. Or mar savalak a karmelis damye. And the other brayse says no. Even after you stretch out your hand, it does not have the din of a karmelis, and you may return your hand. So we have two clear brayse that discuss this. So the gemara says loy no. These brayses are not going to necessarily, we can't say, not necessarily is that what the Machlaikis is. The Kula Alma, it's possible to say that both of the brayses agree that Kekarmel is Damya. Once you stretch out your hand on Shabbos, now your hand gets the status of a Karmelis, and you may not return your hand. For Loikashia, there's a difference between these two brayses. There's no question here. What's the difference? Kan lamata masara. In one brayse, it's speaking about a case where a person stretched out his hands below ten tefachim, and kan lamayla masara. And in another case, he stretched out his hands above ten tefachim. What's the difference between a below ten tefachim, above ten tefachim? So, as we'll learn in Mitzvah later in the Gemara, the Rishus Arabim only extends to the height of ten tefachim. Above ten tefachim. The status of Rishus Rabbim doesn't exist. What's the status above ten tefachim? It's called a makim ptur. As we'll see later in the Gemara, that's a fourth kind, a fourth category of a domain, which is a makim ptur, a place where it's potter. It's not a Rishus Yachid. It's not a Rishus Rabbim. So it's not a Karmel Zira. Above ten tefachim is a makim ptur. We'll see. We'll see. Mitzvah Shem. We'll see all the details about it. But over here, when it comes to Rishus Yachid, the domain of Rishus Yachid extends all the way to the Kiyah. On Rishus Harabim only extends up to ten tefachim and not higher than that. So over here, if a person Carmelis. stretch, huh? Carmelis. A Carmelis extends also on, only until ten tefachim. There's no, there's no above ten tefachim is a mokim p'tur. So over here, if a person stretches out his hands below ten tefachim, over here there's a of a Carmelis. A person extended his hands above ten tefachim, so he's in a mokim p'tur. So therefore, he may return his hands. Yeah, That's the Gemara's answer. How, how long can he hold it? He's going to come the Gemara will discuss. Gemara the Gemara the will Gemara. discuss it. Let's right. see. So that's what we're going to see. The Gemara will discuss it. Zag the Gemara weiter. Another option, another way to answer this. 
<coughs> if you want, I can give you a, a, a third answer, how to answer the two braises here. Both of the braises is talking about a person that stretched out his hand below ten tvachim into the Rishos Arabim on Shabbos, but Velavka Karmel is done. Chachamim did not consider his hand to be a Karmel. So now the Gemara is sort of retracting the whole entire thing that it said before. Chachamim didn't create this new status that a person's hand is like a domain for itself, like a Karmelis. There was a Knas, possibly there was a Knas, but not that they made the hand like a status of a Karmelis. In other words, you can, you can take this to two degrees. Either we can say, there's a Knas. The Knas, don't return your hand. Before, Abayu wanted to suggest that the Knas goes so far that they considered the hand to be mamish like a domain for itself. That's the basis of the Knas. Now the Gemara is saying, even if there is a Knas, it doesn't mean that they considered his hand to be a domain for itself. And therefore we could say, V'loy kashe. There's no contradiction of the two braises. Kam One case is that it was right before Shabbos, and the person stretched out his hand, and he should have pulled his back, hand back in. When Shabbos arrived, or right before Shabbos arrived, you should have pulled his hand back in because he's very likely to drop it down on Shabbos and do a half a malacha, which is awesome at the Rabbanon, and he didn't do that. So because he did a part of a malacha, you may, so, so you may think that uh, there should be a gzeda for this, but Chacham will not geyser. Chacham will not geyser, and therefore he's allowed to return his hands. Even though he did do something wrong, the Rosh explains the Gemara this way, he did do something wrong because he should have pulled his hand back before Shabbos. So he shouldn't come to do a half a malacha. Still, in this case, he's allowed to pull his hand back. Kan Mishacha Once Shabbos arrives and you do a half a malacha, here Chacham you're not allowed to pull your hand back. Okay, so that's the difference. And the Gemara is going to focus now on this answer. Again, there's one case where the person did not do a half a malacha yet. He might do a half a malacha by holding his hand there. There the Chachamim said, because you didn't do any malacha yet, you're allowed to return your hand. In a case where the person already did a half a malacha by stretching out his hand on Shabbos, so over here the Chachamim will gaze it that you have to hold your hand there until the end of Shabbos. You're not allowed to return your hand. One second, if it's Mibba Ejayim and I'm uh, out here, if I drop it, I do absolutely nothing. Correct. So uh, half a malacha. You do a half a malacha. It's out there and it stays out there. But there's a hanacha that's done though. The but very, it's not transferring from Rishos. If, if my hand's out of It's still Rishos, considered to be a half a malacha. A chayfitz, which, which is in a, in a motion, as long as it's in your hand, that's considered to be in motion, and then you drop it, that's a half a malacha. Mm-hmm. And taking right. it in, it's transferring Rishos, then it's going down. So that's, that's two steps. That's, uh, that's l'chayt also a half a malacha that the person is doing. But then with the chayfitz that's in your hand, it's connected to your body, even though it's not, not. it's not fully connected. If you may, I, 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 I was medayik before I said it's not fully connected, but to some extent it's connected. Somebody put something in your hand. And then well, one second, one second. We'll get to the what if soon. Let me, let me just see the hemshchad the Gemara. Answer, right? huh? you third, third, third answer. answer. Third answer. Third answer. Let me see the hemshchad and then we'll see that case in a moment. Okay. So now the Gemara focuses on this. Frek the Gemara other rabbe. There's a svara to say in the contrary. Ipchem estavra. You could say svara is the other way around. Me boid yaim. A person that stretched his hands out from the daytime. Di shadi le leosil dechiv chatos. If you force him to keep his hand in that position till the end of Shabbos and he ends up dropping it, he's not going to come to doing a full malacha. He did, just did a half a malacha. Lick the suah rabbanon. So there perhaps it's possible to apply the gzeir of the rabbanon that he should hold his hand in that position. Then enforcing their gzeda will not cause a person to come to do a full malacha. Mi shecha However, a person, sorry, <coughs> that stretched out his hand on Shabbos, the ishadile. If you force him to hold his hand in that position, what's going to happen? If he ends up dropping it, so then asibuli dechiv chatos. Possibly he can he'll come to doing a full malacha. He stretched his hand out on Shabbos, did the first half of the malacha. You force him to keep his hand there because of the knas. He's going to drop it. He'll do a full malacha. So in such a case, loylik nesu rabbana. The rabbana should not give him this knas to have, allow this to happen. In other words, isn't there a simple idea that chachamim will not enforce a knas in a case that the knas itself might bring a person to do a full malacha? But you're basically not canasting the harder yeah, one. Yeah, okay, and a but, but uh, logically though, uh, we have no choice. In this case, we can't make a knas that will cause a person to do a full malacha. The Gemara brings a very I- interesting example similar to this. Since the Talmidim in the Beis Hamedr should not give this answer, 
This may answer a different question that Rav Bivi Barabaya asked. What did Rav Bivi Barabaya ask? The boy Rav Bivi Barabaya, the question he asked was, Hid big pas A person attaches the dough to the walls of an oven on Shabbos. That's the way they would bake, break, be, uh, bake bread. I'm all. It wasn't on a shelf in the oven. It wasn't on the floor of the oven or in a pan. It was on the, they would attach the dough to the walls. And it would, it would bake with a crust, whatever, on the walls. And then you would have to remove the bread from the walls. So now he attached the bread to the walls of the oven on Shabbos. It doesn't get immediately baked. So this is a malacha on Shabbos, not to bake on Shabbos. But he could still save himself from doing that malacha by taking out the bread before it break, bakes. Are you allowed to take out the be- bread that's about to bake, b- uh, bake on Shabbos to save yourself from al malacha? He tiru <clears throat> is it permitted for the person to remove Lirdaisa means to remove that bread from the walls on Shabbos in order not to come to a of Chatos or it's not permitted what's the issue over here let him, let him remove it what's the issue the answer is Rashi and Taisas explain over here Ridiyas Hapas removing the bread from the oven is a Isser Midr it's not a malachit, not from the Lama Tes Malachis, but it's an Isser Midr Abanon. Rashi and Taisus here actually quotes, it's a Chachma. It's more of a Chachma, it's not Mamash and Malacha. It's only an Isser Midr Abanon. And, and which Malacha? Like, uh, which, it's, it's actually not connected to any of the Lama Tes Malachis. It's either also because it might cause you to bake by doing this, or it's also because it's Ovdin the Chayl. It's Monday in activity that the Chachamim asked it for. So this is the Ism de Rabbanon. Removing the bread is the Ism de Rabbanon. Now the question is, <coughs> do Chachamim leave their Ism de Rabbanon in place, even though it's going to cause the, ba- the bread to be baked and you're going to be over Ism de Raisa? Or in this case, to save a yid from doing Ism de Raisa, Chachamim removed their Xerim de Rabbanon. So this is very similar to the point that we had before. Will Chachamim impose a knas in a case that their knas is going to cause the person to drop the item and cause them to do a malacha da'iraisa or not? Or no, they don't impose their gzeris in such a scenario. That's the, that's the connection the Gemara is making here. Okay, so it's not, it's not exactly the same case if you think about it. The Rishayim uh, point this out, it's not exactly the same case because when a person puts bread into the oven, if you're going to leave the bread inside the oven, it's a matter of time, but it's going to get baked. When a person is holding his hand outside, so you could argue that he could theoretically work very hard to hold his hand up. We'll get someone else to help him hold his hand up and hold his hand there until the end of Shabbos. But the Taisus is shown him over here addresses this, and his first answer, he says, It's just as it's obvious that the bread is going to be baked, to force a person to hold his hand, stretched out a whole day, the, 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 the food is going to drop from his hands, and he's going to end up doing the full malacha. So that's the comparison there. So the Gemara says, huh? Yeah, it's not a chil it's still not a chil of chatos, and a chanami. Okay, the Gemara Rashi says that over here. Okay, so the Gemara says, Tif shayit, we could be patient from here that the Chachamim were not matter the, their Gzeira in a place that it's going to cause the Chi of Chatas Medairaisa to happen. Just like we see over here, Chachamim impose a Knas, even though it leads to a Chi of Dairaisa, so to there, Chachamim leave their Isser in place, even though it's going to cause a Chi of the person baking on Shabbos. So the Gemara says, Okay, this is not a question. Tifshait. We could in fact actually be patient. Is he Baya? That's one answer the Gemara says. We can be patient. We buy say, man. Now the Gemara says, let's go back to, to the braises that we said before. We can't be patient. And there's no question the two braises that we had a stira before. The person that stretches out his hand, is he allowed to return his hand or not? It's not a question. It depends if the person stretched out his hand b'shoigig or if the person stretched out his hand b'mezid. If you stretched out your hand b'shoigig, then there's no knas. If you stretched out your hand b'mezid, then there is a knas. Then the Gemara continues and says, the Taich is like, b'shoigig, loy kansur abonon, b'mezid kansur abonon. If you buy say, another answer yet, the Gemara says, idi vidi b'shoigig. In both cases of the Braises that were quoted before, they were both in the case of Shaykik. Did Chachamim go so far to impose their Knas on a Shaykik because of a Mezid? 
Mar Savar, Kansu Shaygig Atu Meizid, or Mar Savar, Loi Kansu Shaygig Atu Meizid. They did not make a class for a Shaygig Atu Meizid. A person that's a sh- that's Meizid will come and say, Ah, I was a Shaygig, and pull his hand back. Did Chachamim want to impose the class even in the case of a Shaygig or not? That was the Machlekes of the two Braises. Vibay Seime, another answer, I think this is uh, number five or six, I mean, the, the answer of the two Braises is, Lo Eilam, Loi Kansu. Really, there is no Knas here. Even for Shagig, there's no knas. For Loikashia, the question of the two braises is not a question for the following reason. Kan la oisa chatzer, we're going to Davdalad Omer Aleph. Kan la oisa chatzer, and kan la chatzer acheres. It depends if the person wants to return his hand to the same chatzer where it came from, or he wants to return his hand to a different chatzer. And the Gemara will explain in a moment what the difference is. Kedabai minei Rav and Rav Nachman. Rav asked the question from Rav Nachman. Hoisa yadim melea peiris. Person had his hands filled with peiris. Vaitzia lachotz and he stretches his hand out and Shabbos and Torah shusarabim. Ma'alach zira. Loisa chotzer. Is he allowed to return his hand to the chotzer where it came from? Amalei mutter. If you're just returning a hand to where it originated from, that's that's mutter. Lachotzer acheres. But if you want to return your hand to a different chotzer. You're not going to return your hand, in other words. You're going to, you're going to yeah, throw it, or, or if you have to, huh? <coughs> drop the basket. Drop the basket. No, no, not drop the basket in the Rishos HaRabim. But, but in a different Rishos, you're not going to return it to the original Rishos HaYachad where it came from, but you could drop it in a different Rishos. Then, Osir. Then, Mahu, Amalei, Osir. That's Osir. What's the reason? Umayishna. What's the difference if you're returning it to the same Rishus Sayyachat where it originated from, or you're returning it to a different Rishus Sayyachat? <coughs> Either way, you're taking it back into a Rishus Sayyachat. <coughs> so the Gemara says, kura de milcha. If you'll eat a certain measurement of salt, that will sharpen your brain, and you'll understand the pshat on this. And he says, that, what's the pshat? Hasam Over here, the person got nothing done. He, he stretched his hand out, realized it's Shabbos, returned his hand to the original position where it came from. He totally undid his action. Nothing got done. But if you allow the person to move his hand into a different Rishos and place it down there, so he did something. So he may in the future confuse a Rishos Yachad with a Rishos Rabbim and stretch out his hand and drop it into the Rishos Rabbim itself. That's the case where the Brais has said that it's forbidden to drop it down. That's the conclusion of the Gemara. Just to finish off with something which is Nagel, Allah Chalamaisa, what happens if a person f- realizes, he walked out from his house and he realizes that he's carrying something on Shabbos? So what do you do? So you don't put it down in the Rishos Arab somewhere and hide it somewhere over there in the Rishos Arab. You've got to continue walking. Because if you put it down or stop there in the Rishos Arab, you just did a Hanacha. Right, you continue walking. But according to what it says, the, 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 the Naida Behuda says, you see from this Gemara, so what's the better thing to do? You should, if you walked out from your house, you're on your way to Shul. Should you go to Shul? It's better to go back home and bring it back to the so place where you're from so nothing is accomplished. Lo yis avida You have another minute? Yeah. You have, it's 829. So just to say a word from the Rebbe on the Gemara, <laughs> when you get to what we learned before, Pater Mutter. There's the Balabais that's standing there and he's allowing the Ani to take something out of his hands and the Ani does the full Malach and the Balabais, the Gemara says, is Pater Mutter. So Taisus brings up the question, Pater Mutter, it's Lifna Evil Esit and Michshel. So Taisus says, Lifna Evil Esit and Michshel, it depends on the case. Is it a piece of bread that the Oni could have uh, gotten without you making it available for him or not? Lifna Evil is only if you, it wouldn't have been available for him otherwise. You made it available for him. But even in a case where you were the one that made it available for him, does that mean that there's Lifna Evil here? Taisus' maskana is that there is Lifna Evil here. Right, and the, the Taisvis, the Taisvis Yishanim, there's an Issa of Lifnei Iver, and the Alter Rebbe brings in a Shulchan Aruch as well. Even when you're not doing any action whatsoever, but there's still Lifnei Iver. So Rabbi Kivayga asks a question, so why does the Mishnah say, Pater or Mutter? How could the Gemara use that expression? It's not Mutter, there's Lifnei Iver. So the Rebbe Nasiche brings that Lifnei Iver is an Issa Bifnei Atzma. There's a famous Chikire and Achreinim that the Rebbe discusses in the Sikha, is Lifnei Iver a sniff, it's a branch of the Isser that you're being machshal the person in. If I'm machshal a person in the Isser of Shabbos. So now I was over on a prat of Isser Shabbos. And therefore there's halachas. When you get to a person that's a machal Shabbos before Hesi, you become a mumer 
for Shabbos, and therefore you can't trust his kashras and so on. Or no, if the Ivar is a separate Isser. The Gemara, by saying, Potter Umutter, even though he was Ivar Lifne Ivar, is telling you that Lifne Ivar is an Isser Lifne Atzmoya, but as far as Isser Shabbos is concerned, he wasn't Ivar any Isser whatsoever. But they never do that in Gemara. Like, if there's <coughs> some other Isser going on, they'll highlight that. They won't tell you. Right, but over here, it wants to highlight the fact that, that Legabe Shabbos, it's completely mutter, and he's not a mumr lechil Shabbos at all. He wasn't lechal Shabbos whatsoever. It's a totally separate issue of Lifneyeva.